Welcome back to the channel, everybody. This is Joe Van Cleve in the world famous backyard of Joe Van Cleve. Same name, actually. Yeah. yeah. Bob, welcome again. Thanks. Oh, yes. So we have Bob Marshall with us of Typewriter Muse fame from lovely Southern California, Riverside, California. Right. You're on a road trip. Yeah. You're driving through Albuquerque. Yeah. You stopped in to see us. We love to have you. Well, I was out of money. Oh, yeah. Apparent typewriters doesn't pay very much. No, so that's true. I was out of money, so I asked Joe if I could just crash at his place and eat his food for a while. Sure. He said, yeah. <laughs> that's right. Uh, no, Joe's been kind enough to put me up. I recommend everybody stop at Joe's house. No, don't stop at Joe's house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, uh, lu lucky me to get to call Joe my friend. And it reminded me of, uh, I think it was a year and a half, maybe two years ago, we had Joe as a guest on Austin Typewriters, Inc., and I think that was the first time we kind of did a phone thing on Austin Type Writing, yeah. Inc., which is fun. Yeah. Uh, I'm the West Coast host of uh, that wonderful typewriter podcast called it is. Austin Type Writers, Inc. Yeah, it is a great podcast, and uh, you guys should listen to it if you haven't already. And uh, stream it. Stream the whole thing. Just binge oh, it. Yeah. Binge watch it. Oh, yeah, because there's, oh, gosh, almost 40 episodes, 35 episodes oh, or yeah. something crazy yeah. now. And if I'm not putting something out, I know the guys in Austin, David and Everito, yes. these guys are yes. putting stuff out. So yes. we're, we're having a good time. So Joe and I got to become friends with him being a guest uh, on the show. Yep. And then uh, our Sunday morning. Oh, yes. Uh, Type Club Live, hosted by Gregory Short. Check that out. He streams it on YouTube, but you can also become a member and join in with the live discussion on Sundays, and that's always fun. A lot of typewriter talk. So Joe and I are hanging out in the backyard, playing with our typewriters, chatting it up with my son, yes, uh, who, who came along with me here, uh, who's just out of shot, and we started talking about what it takes to buy a typewriter. Joe had put out a video a while back on how to pick up a good typewriter at a thrift store, yeah, which is an option. Yeah, it's one option is you go look around for a used typewriter somewhere, and it's as-is condition, and the real question is, how do you know if it's worth buying? Right. And so there's a series of checks that I do, basic mechanical checks. You know, does the carriage move? Do, are all the keys there? Are all the type bars there? <clears throat> do right. they all move? Right. Those are basic things. Now, things can stick, and you know it'll need degreasing and cleaning. That's right. something you can do later. But you've got to bas basically make sure everything is there intact. That's my approach. Now, if you have a basement full of parts machines, maybe you can buy real rough typewriters that are missing parts, but I generally don't. I don't have those kind of parts machines, so yeah. I'm looking for machines that are intact. Well, and that's hard, too. You can't really buy the parts, and it's very no. hard. I know myself as a, as a typewriter mechanic. Getting parts is near impossible, and we wait, or I'm kind enough to reach out to other typewriter mechanics across the world, asking them if uh, they've got the parts I'm looking for. And it really turns into a lot, and it turns into a lot for the customer. I can tell you, I get both sides of the coin, where I get somebody who's purchased a machine at a thrift store, and then they bring it to me uh, for service, and so I get to service it. Uh, which is great and sometimes it's quite easy and affordable to service it other times it's just not yeah. someone has purchased a machine because it was a pretty color but come to find out it's missing half the guts because they, right. they just don't know we don't have as a society the education all the time on on what is and what is not included in a typewriter most people could go to a car lot and see if the car has all four wheels, does it drive correctly, etc. That would make, that we're very in tune with right. as a human race. But with typewriters, it's not always possible. So I've done that side of the coin where I've just had to tell them, look, this will take too much work or we don't have the parts available. Uh, this machine isn't going to work. Or they bring it to me and it takes almost nothing. Or my favorite if, that I get a lot of too is this was my grandfather's. This was my grandmother's. Uh, this yeah. was my father's yeah, grandmother's. Yeah, an heirloom kind of machine. Yeah, it's yeah. covered in dust. We've had it just sitting on the shelf for 30 years. Uh, you know, can you get yeah. it going again? Well, sure. Yeah. So my question for you is if you have a, 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 an assortment of typewriters, let's say, for sale, mm -hmm. right, and somebody walks in, how do you go through the process or what process mm. do you go through to figure out which typewriter is for them? Yeah, that's a hard one because yeah. I'm a mechanic. I'm not a salesman. Yeah. So selling machines is can be hard, and I sell handfuls of them a month. And so if I'm, whether I'm mobile or whether I'm uh, in my show space, it's all the same of come on in and just start, what do you want to play with? Right. What can, you can touch anything you want. What do you want to play with? And 
it always amazes me. Someone will call, might call me and say, well, I'm really looking for something compact, portable. And so I hand them a Hermes rocket or something mm -hmm. or a Corona folding. And they go, oh, this is great. Hey, let me try that big SM over there. Yeah. And they leave with a 35-pound machine. Yes. So you just never know right. what well, machines and talk to people. Yes. Well, and that, that comes down to what are they going to do with the machine. That's right. Right. And it's like they're like oftentimes young people are attracted to small, right. blue, Oh, yeah. Colorful, oh, yeah. I should say. Colorful pink, green, pink. Yeah. Right. And oftentimes those kind of typewriters are exactly the ones that don't work that well from the, right. they're never engineered to be a real workhorse Good machine. Like machine, you look yeah. at like a Smith Corona Corsair, a blue one. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. It's a plastic thing, a, it's based on a plastic <laughs> chassis. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's never gonna be a great machine. You might love your Corsair, no shade from I know people who love theirs, right. yeah. But it's not the same as a upright standard. Ba real well built. Real well built. Right. So it depends on what they're doing. If, if they, um, you know, people are looking a lot of times for the ideal typewriter. Right. Because because <laughs> a lot of people that come in new to it, they don't. They are not like collector like right. people like us. They're hoarders. They just want one good machine. Extreme collector is my term. Extreme yeah. collector. Hoarder is a little rough. Hoard, that's a little oh, I'm rough. Just joking. You can yeah. call me. Uh, you can call <laughs> me anything you want when it comes to typewriter. My yeah. collection is is yeah. deep. But I get it. people don't know that a lot of times there's not one perfect typewriter. Right. Right. You, like if you want portability, the compromise is performance. That's right. Uh, and features you might have to sacrifice that's for right. portability. That's right. uh, on the other hand, if you want the ultimate in manual typewriter typing experience, you're going to give up portability, yep. most yep. likely, because yep. you'll have a big upright machine that doesn't have a case, maybe. Right. I tell everyone that the bigger the machine is, the better it is it's going to type. But yeah. you don't want to be carrying around a number five. Right. The, and that's why the, the medium-sized portables, like larger portables that have cases, yeah. are a lot of times the best compromise. Yeah, that's a good like one. it'll still offer you portability, yeah. but it's going to work better than a really small one. Right? Yeah, and you really can carry it for a good block. Yeah. Before. And that's why I like my typewriter covers. They double as handle cushions, so you can wrap it. Oh yes. Wrap it between your hand and the handle. Yeah. And if you needed to carry it two blocks, you could. Right. 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 It just makes it that much easier. You never know what you need or what people want. So I always just tell them play with everything. And at the end of the day, if they can't find the machine they're looking for. That's okay. Come back in a month. I'll have a right. whole other set of machines, yeah. right? Well, I've seen this now at, at I'm, I don't sell typewriters, but I've seen this happen at type ins where somebody is using the type in as an opportunity to kind of check out the range of machines available to idea. give them an idea for what they might want to get on their yep. own. Yep. And they might settle on this one machine. Oh man, this is actually kind of the one machine I want. And they've been playing with it, they've written three quarters of a page, yeah. you know, of personal stuff, and they're kind of really starting to meld with the machine. And then uh, then they might ask you a question, oh, does this do tabs? And then you say, oh no, this one doesn't have tabs. And then all of a sudden, their entire countenance changes, and they're like, it's like a deal killer. Like, right, they were right. hoping it had every feature, but again, that's kind of what you have to educate people about, is not all typewriters had every feature. Right. And even something as simple as what side of the machine is the is the backspace on. Right. That can be a good Because I feature. think I like it on the right side. Yeah. It's more intuitive. Yeah. You know, like this Corona 3 folding backspace is on the right, right side, on side, right? And yeah. I, I switched to uh, the uh, Hermes 3000, it's on the left. It's on the left. <laughs> so yeah. then it's a little bit different, right? So yeah. it's what you get used to, you know? And I think that you can have a machine that you see that you've seen a picture of and think this is the machine I want this is what I want to type on or like you said you've typed on it at a type in but the one you typed on on the type in isn't for sale because it's a type in not a sales floor yeah uh, so at that point it's real easy to purchase online right there's a lot of online sales yes. I don't do online sales I prefer not to ship I don't right. like to ship um, but, but what, what are some of the things? Area. Yeah, what are the some of the things you would advise a person to look for if they oh. want to buy online and they don't know who to trust, like to ship it properly and all that? Yeah, that's the benefit I think of like Etsy and okay. eBay. You can always return them if you do find uh, a place that will sell you the machine without a sales platform, uh, as far as Etsy or eBay. 
uh, then you know you're going to save a few dollars. Right. Uh, a lot of times they'll save a few dollars. And if they do have a reputation, it's okay to check out Google. It's okay to check out their website. It's okay to check out what people say. There'll always be uh, communication issues from time to time between mechanic uh, and typer because finding the interim is, is, is very hard. I'm a very mechanical person. I appreciate everyone knows my voice on the show. Uh, but I'm not. I'm a terrible salesman. I, I don't. I'll, I just want to sit and play with typewriters. So <laughs> if you want to play with typewriters? Stop on by. Let's sit and play with our typewriters, right? Or uh, let's play with my typewriter. Well, maybe that's your form of salesmanship. Fun. Is right, just your just your infectious and... enthusiasm for yeah. the typewriter, right? Yeah. Well, they're they're great machines, and any typewriter. I know, for example, as it is with a lot of. Uh, online sales, uh, uh, when you pour hours into a machine as a typewriter mechanic, and then you put that machine up for sale, you have the ability to warranty it. Yes, it, it does cost money. I, I bill $60 an hour as of today uh, as a typewriter mechanic. Uh, so it does cost extra money, but you get the warranty and you get the idea of, of knowing that it's all been typed and handled correctly. And if there's something really wrong with a machine, I won't sell it. If there's something that's missing, I'll write on the tag. This machine works great, but the whole tab system ka did kaput, so I just tore it out because who the heck needs tabs on a right. Royal Quiet Deluxe anyway, or whatever, maybe. Yeah, yeah. So I've, I've, and I've been very successful in those because people, we, j we just aren't using tabs. Right. People are just writing poetry or stream of consciousness. We're not doing columns of figures. Exactly. Yeah. Or yeah. filling out birth certificates or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> we, we just don't use the machines like that anymore. Yeah. Um, but that that's a rarity. You know, any machine that I right. sell, I need to be able to uh, warranty, not guarantee, I didn't manufacture it, but I've serviced it. I've put my name on it. Uh, so I'm very interested in making sure that works. And I always tell people, if they get it home, they're playing with it. It's not doing what they want. It's not the machine that they want. It's not a big... You got 30 days. Yeah. Bring it back. Exchange right. it. Free of charge. Let's get you the right. machine that you do want. And so if you live in another part of the country than Southern California, you might have to rely on, you know, internet sales, eBay, mm -hmm maybe a, an auction like Shop Goodwill or eBay or, you know, or Etsy, right? So yeah. Some online store. A lot of good sellers on but Etsy. But there's also typewriter shops mm -hmm. uh, in regions of the country, maybe not in your state. And if you live what we call back east, right, out here in the west, we call right. it back east. Welcome to the southwest. Uh, yes. That's back east. Yes, yeah. back east is like if I drive from here to Colorado, I've driven across New England, right. essentially, right? <laughs> right, just to get to the next state. Right. So maybe if you live in Ohio, you might be within a few hours driving distance of a, of a typewriter shop in another state. And so the idea is to find a reputable shop that you can have a relationship with, yeah. that you can go shopping and look around and find the machine, and then you know that you can rely on him for, for service. And down the road, right? Yeah, and I think it's okay. To, I've had a lot of people, even being in the middle of Southern California, maybe they live two, three hours away, way down south, up north, or in the center of Santa, and they spend three hours driving to me. They sit down with all my machines, and they go, well, this is great, but I'm just not finding what I want, but I had a great day playing with your typewriters. You, <laughs> yeah. know, you know, that's okay. That's yeah. great. Right. And then I get a call from them two weeks later going, I think I want this machine. Do you have one of these? And I go, well, you know what? Uh, yeah, I think I do. And 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 then uh, maybe I ship it to them, or maybe they come back down and make a day of right. it. But building that relationship is is okay. Uh, <clears throat> as a top rider mechanic, we, uh, you know, I go back to we're not always people people we're machine people we're yeah. mechanical people. Right. Uh, so sometimes it's 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 hard to. Uh, have those real solid salesmanship type relationships, right. uh, but we're very good at let's look at your machine, let's see what it's doing or not doing for right. you. And sometimes the machine can't do what you want it to do. Right. Um, there's been that where a machine is, I promise you, uh, any machine that I sell you is going to be 95% better from what it was the day it came off the showroom floor. But that five percent of air could be a few things. Yeah, it's all listed. And right. Try it out, and the, you know it's all set yeah. in the price. So. Yeah, I think the big thing is like education, making sure the customer knows what typewriters do and don't do. Yeah, make sure they know what ultra portables don't do versus bigger machines, yeah. and know the trade-offs between portability. There's a trade-off with with like build quality and performance and features yeah. versus a big machine. The trade-off is portability and 
it's hard to lug around. But boy, you can type them you all can day type long all, and not all day long. Anything, yeah. Exactly. So these are just some of the ideas we have about buying typewriters. And there's a whole lot more we could say, but you would probably get bored with us by the I think it's a worthwhile experience financially. Yes. If you spent a few hundred dollars on a machine instead of tens of dollars on a machine, but that machine that you spent several hundred dollars on is what it needs to be for you will work well for you and work for many many years tens of years right. uh, with needing nothing but ribbon and slug cleaning because yeah. uh, you use it once a week and keep it covered when you store it when you're not using it yeah so i threw all that in there oh, yeah you know then then you're going to be great uh, and it's okay to own a few machines like right. this that's what's going to give you your and ultimate. the other thing that i have to remind, remind myself is there's people out there that don't want a collection of typewriters. They want one typewriter. Yeah, or two. Or two, or right? One. Yeah, yeah maybe like a portable yeah. and a and a big standard. desktop standard. Yeah. Right? And that's okay. So in that case, I think it's better to go buy one of those machines from a shop where it's been gone over rather than risking an online sale yeah. of an unknown quantity, an unknown quality, or going to a thrift store and finding a beat up wreck and then having to go pay money Me. anyways to yeah. get it fixed right. and so you've already paid a hundred dollars overpriced piece of junk at a thrift store so it's better maybe just to walk into a typewriter shop find what you want and you can test it out we're full of education yeah. we're going to educate you to the hills you're going to get tired of listening to us educate you on typewriters <laughs> uh what you want and you just got to find a machine that you can yeah. have a good relationship with to, yeah to and and find the shop that you can have a relationship with like yeah. Bob Marshall at Typewriter Muse in Southern yeah. California at Riverside. Thanks for having me. Yes, sir. And it was great. And if any questions out there about typewriter sales, I'd love to hear you down below. Drop a comment down below. Yeah. And as always, keep writing. Write from the heart, write from the head, put it down on paper, be creative. Have yourselves a great day. Bye bye for now. David likes to say, keep your tops, lugs clean. That's right. Keep them clean. Sure. Austin Typewriter Inc. Listen to the podcast. Bye bye, everybody.